All right, um, we are here uh, in this beautiful space, this historic space, and uh, have some wonderful people to introduce you to. Okay. Let's turn and let's say good morning to everyone. Good morning. So hi, I am Virag. So if you see it in almost Jewish, you probably know me, but you don't know my beautiful colleague here, Sharil, who is the founder of Atlanta Israel Coalition and the executive director of Americans United with Israel. Yes, and if you're following on her page, the live streaming, then you don't know me. So I am Virag and I am running the page Almost Jewish. I am a non-Jewish Zionist. And today we are bringing you something very exciting. So let's... Uh... I can take it over so we can start. <laughs> okay. So first of all, we are in Augusta in Georgia. For me, it's like such a nice field trip in America. And I'm going to turn the camera. And then we are going to show you this incredible people who did an even more incredible job here. But the story is going to be told by them. So you can go ahead and ask your first question. So can you describe exactly where we are right now? Introduce yourself to our audience. Sure, I'm, I'm Jack Goldenberg. I'm on the board of directors for the museum project. Uh, and I was tasked with the engineering and construction during renovation. Uh, we have renovated or demo, did demolition on two buildings. The one we're in now is uh, the temple or synagogue building, which was the original home, uh, synagogue home of congregation B'nai Yisrael is what it was chartered as originally, as the, and it's the fourth oldest reformed congregation in the nation. Uh, the cornerstone of this building is 1869. Uh, in the 50s, this building was taken over uh, by the city of Augusta uh, after the congregation moved to a new location. I'm going to interrupt you for a second because I'm the European one here and we have many European followers. So, where is Augusta on the map of America? So, just Augusta, Pretty curate for Augusta, people. Augusta, Georgia is if you come to the southeastern United States and find Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and go about two and a half hours east, uh, you'll find Augusta, Georgia, uh, right on the Savannah River. Is it a big city? Is it a large city? So what's uh, the, the population? The, it's, it's a small place compared to those of us from the northeast, uh, but the CSRA is about 500,000 people. Okay, that's big. Thank you. Uh, so as I was saying, this building was uh, taken over by the city uh, and converted into uh, office space. This building that we're standing in now, the synagogue building, uh, had three stories. There was a ground floor, a first floor, main floor, and a second or third floor, however you look at it. Uh, and our demolition that was just completed took out all the structural members to take out the third floor and now we have this beautiful area as it was originally uh, and I think I have a, a picture that we can show you this is what this area looked like originally and as you see on this slide uh, the person we can thank for this is our first and founding president, Jack Steinberg of blessed memory. Uh, it was Jack's dream to restore these, this building. Uh, he teamed with Historic Augusta and stopped the demolition of this historic building, which I might add is also the oldest standing synagogue building in the state of Georgia. Uh, and next door, we will see later the Court of Ordinary that building was also slated for uh, demolition, and it is one of the oldest fireproof buildings in the nation. Very interesting architecture. So this building will be turned into a, a an event place for uh, parties, uh, social weddings, gatherings. social gatherings. Okay. Uh, after we restore it to synagogue minus pews. Uh, and then we'll be able to facilitate those kind of events. Uh, the downstairs or main floor will be- Downstairs? Yes, wow. uh, the How ground floor. Uh, 
outside right now. There'll be an elevator lighter and a connector. Okay. Uh, and that floor will be a continuation of museum exhibits. So you'll go enter through the Court of Ordinary Building, the fireproof building, yes. and come through the connector into the ground floor of this building and continue your tour of exhibits. And downstairs in this area will be an auditorium where we'll conduct educational programs. That's right so now beautiful. we're using this this building, the Court of Ordinary Building. That's so beautiful. Did you actually show a picture of us? how it was really about to be demolished, like it was meant to be a parking lot. And that's so, correct. The, the city, when the new uh, IT information technology building was completed, the city slated this for demolition, both of these to, to extend the parking area here. This was actually during demolition. This is just so crazy. Like imagine, as I said, it's the oldest standing shul or like right synagogue. In, in Georgia and it was up for demolition for a parking lot. I mean well again, the, you know, in all fairness to the city, they didn't recognize that. They recognized the immediate need. And if it wasn't for our partner historic Augusta that identified that, yeah. and along with Jack Steinberg again, yes. uh, if it wasn't for uh, Eric Montgomery, the executive director at Historic Augusta and Jack Steinberg, this would be a parking lot. And I think this literally. is when Robin comes in because you are the powerhouse here and the Wonder Woman who <laughs> literally stepped in and did the magic to save this place. Yeah, the board president calls me a spark plug and <laughs> I, I'm Robin Wittenberg Dudley and um, I actually grew up in Augusta, Georgia, but I left in 1972. And when I heard about this project and that they were probably gonna to have to tear the buildings down. I decided to move myself back to Augusta and uh, work with the board and um, do some outreach and start talking to people in South Carolina since a third of the congregation that belonged here mm -hmm. with the synagogue in 1860 actually came from South Carolina. And then by um, June, 2020, we had raised enough money to start on phase one. So what makes someone give up her comfortable life and move here and sleep? Because my, my parents grew up here, my family had contributed a lot to the community and I knew that there was a lot of history here so that I just felt like that I could do my social justice advocacy and feeding the hungry and helping the homeless mm -hmm. wherever and what would not be a better place to do it than the hometown where I grew up. And then I'm very much of a believer in my Jewish heritage. I'm proud of it. And I just felt like it was the right time to be saving these two buildings and doing something meaningful with them, almost like a humanitarian effort to fun. teach people mm -hmm. to, about uh, what Judaism is, about what the state of Israel is, about the Holocaust, which everybody should know about and about Jewish practice and traditions and also the contributions that the Jews had made to the central Savannah River area. Wonderful. That's um, powerhouse is an understatement. <laughs> so I know that uh, we have others who have helped a lot. Um, could you tell me Introduce yourself to everybody and my story. <laughs> yeah, well, tell me what inspired you to be here today and how, how did your passion ignite when it comes to this project? Because it's a big one and it's so special. Yeah, several, actually, a couple of years before Robin heard about it and, and came down here when, when they decided to uh, put in the newspaper that they were taking down these buildings. Historic Augusta raised its head and, uh, and, and Jack, Weinstein, Jack Steinberg, excuse me. Uh, recruited several of us to come down to meeting after meeting of the city council to uh, encourage them not to take those buildings down. So then it began, uh, these buildings were severely uh, reconstructed, both of them, and uh, it, it just became a labor of love to be able to uh, have each of them used in a very constructive way for the synagogue to be uh, reused in a more appropriate way and for an educational center to be uh, housed in our community where we need that part of our past and our present to be showcased. 
Um, so I uh, do a lot of work in the Jewish community. And so it, it was tempting. It was right about the time that I was thinking about retiring. So it gave me a little bit a little bit to do and it became a lot to do. And, and frankly, a lot of people were recruited and, and we're still working and we still have a lot to do. And you'll see in the other building where we're doing all the things that Robin has mentioned as far as, as bringing that story to everyone. I can see your passion, Jack. Yeah. Um, we didn't give your name. I'm Jackie Cohen and uh, we've been here in Augusta since 1978, raised our children here and been active in the community as well as professionally. So, Beautiful. Uh, so this is a, another stage that what we're a wonderful, going through. Yes, wonderful gift to uh, share with your children also, mm -hmm. this accomplishment, Judah. And we have Judith here yeah. who actually speaks Hungarian, so we can just make a whole. Are you going to do the Yeah, we're going to do a, yeah. yeah. Gonna, we'll just leave. Everyone else Yeah, we're we'll just going to make a secret <laughs> interview here. So, hi, Judith, and very nice meeting you next year as a fellow Hungarian in Augusta, Georgia. Like, that's <laughs> this is the craziest thing that I've ever imagined. Yeah, so I started by. Uh, saying my name and uh, I am working with Jackie we have a little group of about four of us uh, that are working on the content for the displays and the uh, education uh, wing of this so the areas that uh, Robin mentioned uh, four areas of those are primarily working on the Holocaust and these are sections uh, my passion for this, telling the story about the Holocaust is one, uh, family were victims and parents were survivors of the Holocaust, so it's something I want to continue for people to uh, remember and learn about. And I lived in Israel, so that's, uh, so, uh, that's why those are the two areas I'm looking at. And again, we are a group of about four of us helping Jackie make the, uh, this place uh, come, alive. come alive, become <laughs> real. Yes. Is Holocaust education mandatory in the state of Georgia? There is Holocaust education, and there is a commission, which is uh, a government agency. It's called the Georgia Commission on the Holocaust. I am always messing up their, their exact name. And we are working with them, and uh, we are actually going to have some of their uh, traveling displays from them. They also advise the on what areas to focus on where to find materials. And so there is there is a Holocaust education. Um, uh, how effective it is, mm -hmm. I am not sure. Um, uh, there is more to that. The law schools that want you bring kids here for your education. That and uh, we will have programs. We hope we'll have programs that will be age appropriate depending on the schools. Uh, that's in the future. At first, we just need to get the uh, displays mm -hmm. right. and, and focus on some programs. Um, working with the uh, commission that that is their mission education and having their advice will be very helpful. Uh, so shall we walk to uh, the Michael? Yes. I'm uh, Michael Cohen. I'm uh, Jackie's husband, and I volunteered uh, to help with the original uh, organizing some of the archival content of the uh, Jewish community and extended the work of Jack Steinberg and preparing uh, content for the, the display, including uh, the timeline where we'll sort of connect world events, national events, and local events from 1654 to the present, and also working on uh, Israel innovations and uh, Israel uh, aid all over the world, having extended management aid all over the world, and also our, um, we call it the public servants of the area, starting with, uh, there was a sheriff during the Civil War, who lost two sons in the Civil War, and it's extending up to, we currently have a, um, a disability judge who's now, uh, he works in, uh, he has to commute to Columbia, South Carolina to, to do his judge job, but we currently have it. So it extends from pre-Civil War days to the present, as far as people with 
participate in uh, politics and civil and traitors to the community. So, so Amazing. It's very uh, interesting. Well, we look forward to working with you on the Israel side mm -hmm. as you get up and come in and bringing so much to the community. It's so special what you're all doing. So, um, do we have uh, time to go down and show the yes. other area? Lead the way <laughs> and we just follow. This area is all just a green area. And you saw the wagons coming down the street when we came out of the synagogue. So that's, that's what we can remember, even if we weren't here. <laughs> and this is, it, there was not an elevator in this building. And all the congregants came on a stairs up. Uh, Actually, I'm going to go ahead of you so that I can show the building, which is beautiful. On it. <laughs> I mean, look at this architecture and the beautiful renovation here. Oh yeah, it's it's a, a gloomy day in Augusta, but how many jewish people live in augusta now like what's the community uh, the looks like 1500 1500 we're having a hard time hearing um uh the narration it's good it's gonna come back so this has all been refurbished. This was not, did not look like this when we first started. I am sure. The Please go ahead. So as, as we walk in, that whole wall that you're seeing in the front, mm -hmm. that's the time I was talking about. So this whole area, instead of these panels, will be the timeline. And uh, we'll have a dedication wall. And this will be what the, the panels are helping you to see what some of the history was, as well as what the plans are. So you can see yeah. this is the drama mm -hmm. of the building itself. That's going to look really, really nice. Oh, and here we have and Jack yeah, Steinberg, Jack Steinberg is the person who has been mentioned several times. Yeah, he was the founder. He grew up here. His family grew up here. <laughs> And unfortunately passed away in July, 2019. So oh. he wasn't able to see. He saw the beginning of his mm -hmm. dream, but we're carrying on and, and finishing his, his dream. Now that's the video you were gonna show us, right? right? The video. Right. So we'll post that video to our page if anyone wants to take a look at it, because it won't come out as clear if we just record it here. Mm -hmm. Look what I found. <laughs> yes, but it's beautiful. Shows okay. never again. Yeah. Mm. So special. Let's make sure. You never, know, again. never again. So as we use our original pictures of the building and its glory, or we had a local artist. Her name is Frances Force, and she wanted to paint the old synagogue. And then we had another local resident, Donna Whaley. So there have been many people in the community, Jewish and non-Jewish, that have been interested in this project. It's gorgeous. And she painted that for us and gifted it to the Augusta Jewish Museum so we can make note cards and other prints and sell them in um, our eventual museum store. Really like nice. That, right? mm -hmm. uh, and so how many operational synagogue you have now in the city? We have two synagogues that are operating and then a Chabad organization that doesn't call itself a synagogue. Mm -hmm. So we have a, the, the, uh, the, the original uh, congregation Children of Israel is, is moved to another building that's, that's down in, in uh, West Augusta, as we call it, and Odyssey Shuring Synagogue, which also was downtown originally, that's a conservative congregation, is, uh, is in West Augusta and Chabad is further out. Okay. Yeah. And we also and have a congregation in South Carolina, Nate. 
that's uh, actually a bit hundred celebrating its hundredth year and has never had full time lab. Wow! Like, oh, now that's a unique right. story. There, they, uh, they would hire a rabbi perhaps for call venues or something like that. Mm -hmm. but the congregation kept that as it has kept that congregation. And how is like the younger generation getting involved in your project? Are there any interests from them to, you know, help you out, volunteer? Um, we're in the outreach phase right now. And for instance, a couple of years ago, we were at Arts in the Heart, which is a local festival. And we had some young people help us out at the display. And there are young people that we're hoping to get involved with the project. We just finished an oral history project series with Jesse Norman School of the Arts, where some young people helped to interview the elders of the CSRA. So slowly but surely, but I don't think that there's enough involvement right now of the young people. But again, we're still in the outreach phase. So we, if we had if we had the time to do so, we could go in there. That's okay. a multi-purpose room where you'll see the video. But let's go this way because I have something I must show you. That, uh, Cheryl just got excited about this. I know. Is it's an original cool building. Is this? this is it was a fireproof building. It, uh, Jack can tell you more about what the roof was, and these were the way the walls were. So. <laughs> but this was that. That's what makes this building so phenomenal. It's it saved history and we're still saving. Hmm. The floor is amazing too. Yes, I see. All these different secrets right. within this building. Right. This You're floor not. is the same floor that's in that other building I said was a multi purpose mm -hmm. room, as well as the CSRA. But the CSRA is the Central Savannah River area. Thank you for, for yeah. underneath that particular hole right there was a hole that went all the way down into the crawl space and found out that this tile that we thought was typical you know this kind of was really that through that was wow. amazing back then they really did a good job right <laughs> That's so uh, nice that like you mentioned. Actually, I wanted to ask how is like the relationship, you know, in with the non-Jewish community here. And we have really good support. Uh, especially Historic Augusta is a, is a good example. There's very there's some Jewish members in Historic Augusta, but it's really not a Jewish organization mm -hmm. at all. And uh, the director and the membership and a lot of the donors have come from Historic Augusta. People who've been very generous. Um, so there's a good relationship. We have a, a very diverse community because of Fort Gordon and the medical college being here, uh, now it's part of the university. And uh, so we have a, a Muslim community that we work with as well. Oh, that's so beautiful to hear. And the cyber center, cyber center, Savannah Riverside. So we get lots of, so we can be very diverse. Okay, that's just the beautiful uptone message, you know, with hope and, and it's really nice. Right. And, uh, so if you go to this area, this is the area that, that uh, of this display committee, uh, Judy is particularly operative. And that is into the uh, Holocaust area and the uh, Israel Center. And I will say that we talked about that downstairs over there. These areas are nowhere near large enough to tell the story. I tell. was just going to ask that. Yeah, like you really have, have to have a condensed message and, here. And we know that. We know that. Um, so, so we're doing, and, and Judy can explain more about exactly what we're thinking about doing in each of these areas. Uh, but uh, we're hoping that once that there's going to be a pass through uh, closer, there's, a, there's going to be a pass through from that far right building room that we didn't go into directly into the bottom of the synagogue building 
And at that point, some of the display will be able to spread out into there. So, Juby, tell us about that. Would you like me to tell you about <laughs> first the Holocaust area or the or the, the Holocaust? I, I'm, I'm yeah, so curious about your angle. Thanks, Patra. I mean, when the focus has been originally just to show how the building has been renovated. This is some of what we are planning to do. And as Jackie mentioned, we don't have a whole lot of space. So one of the things we are thinking about is having programs in the room that is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. having programs and having exhibits that will go with that. So one of, the, one of the things we of course have to tell is some of the background and how, how uh, it was possible for, for the events of the Holocaust to take place, some of the history. So you start with the Second World War. Tell a little bit about it again. Uh, there is a, this is all, all very tentative and we have a lot more material than mm -hmm. there is room for. And that's why we will probably do some programs associated. Neighbor Neighbors is a, is a uh, exhibit that is in the National Holocaust Museum in DC. And we were thinking of getting some of the material from that to tell that story because at the end we want to walk through the Holocaust and get to the idea of the lessons learned from mm -hmm. it and, and the tolerance that, that leads to mm -hmm. the, the, to be tolerant to, to different religions, to different people. And because Jackie mentioned a very diverse community and also a lot of large African American this is part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, we have, we don't have a very large number, but we do have some local stories of survivors, exactly. and we want to tell you know, that. You yourself can share the current story, perhaps you have information of that. Like, is it something you are going to do? Uh, I would hope so. I mean, we are starting now to kind of just very general mm -hmm. background, but I would hope so at some point. We have done programs uh, in other settings mm -hmm. about the Holocaust, and I did talk a little bit about my family. And uh, I have a cousin in Los Angeles who's very involved in the Museum of Tolerance, and she's a very frequent speaker mm -hmm. about the Holocaust, about her experience as a child. So, uh, another part that we want to do to, to uh, relate to the local area is talk about witnesses witnesses to liberation uh, these are you know we have Fort Gordon which is a military base nearby and we have a lot of people in the area who are uh, uh, have military background and so one of the things we want to tell is anyone who has been to the local area, was not necessarily involved in the liberation of the camps, but they witnessed the liberation of the camps. And so there's a book here I want to show you that was produced by uh, the local historical society. But in it, in it, there are some stories, especially one story of a Jewish lieutenant who was involved in, in the liberation of the camps. So that would be one way. This is, uh, this is, this, this Witnesses for Liberation exhibit is a traveling exhibit that comes from the Georgia Commission. But we are going to add the local story to it, the four uh, uh, veterans who were from this area. So that's very special being able to tie that in. I mean, many people have no idea how um, it's impacted people all over the world. So it's wonderful that you're sharing the yes. local area. Thank you. So this area in here, there's um, an exit door here, and that's why this panel is right in front of us to keep people from going, but it's a little for exit. And we could not take that because of the way the construction is. So we had to leave this as a blockage, otherwise we would have a little bit more space, but so be it, you know. And then this area we're dedicating to Israel. So uh, wonderful, I see over here. Right. And there's, there's lots of interesting construction information that we could share, but you can see just by, you know, glancing over the panels that have been- What a work you have done here. That it was, that this is just really a great accomplishment we're, we're happy to have and then be able to now fill it with uh, Israel's story and we want to focus on 
the diversity of, the, of Israel and on the contributions of Israel uh, to the world and, and to all of us. And you'll have programming. And we'll have programming. <laughs> we we soon will have programming. We love you for programming. That would be we're, wonderful. We're yeah. very, very Can happy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. excited. Yeah. So I, I think as, as part of what we want to do is educate mm -hmm. the public and uh, it, People don't have an idea. I mean, their idea of Jewish people is, you know, European. So they don't have an idea of what Israel looks like and the diversity of people in Israel. And we have been working there too with the consulate in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and they are helping us with some material. And we are also trying to work with Anu, the new uh, museum, Beta Trutza, that, that is with that museum and get some material from them too. One of the ones we are going to get from the council is called Refugees, and it's an exhibit they have already produced, so well, we are going to borrow it. And it tells it tells stories of the Yemenite and all, and then and, and we want to also show diversity in terms of religion in Israel. Again, people have very, very um, uh, misinformation, very little information about. You mean that all Israel. Jews are white, for example, that kind of misinformation? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. And so that that we hope that, and again, because we have a community that's here that's very diverse, and um, we also hope that we will be able to attract some people from the university who also are exposed to information and disinformation about Israel. So um, I think that Michael uh, has already told you that one of the areas we want to show is about inno Israeli innovation. I think some similar to what we have put sort of Anil is doing about the uh, innovation nation. I think that oh, is yeah. Yeah. Nation, the start of nation. nation. Yeah. 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 There's so much that is real. Yeah. So not that's not one of the, the things. And the other thing we want to really emphasize some of the humanitarian, again, that's something not known, mm -hmm. that Israelis are very often the first to be a respondent in yeah. any kind of a disaster. And uh, uh, many of the innovations have been mobilized and have been happening in the Philippines and all over the world. So that's one of the areas, again, and we have so many ideas and so little space mm -hmm. that a lot of that will probably be in the programs and we look forward to working with you. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of many of the people in our community who are religious in, in their own faith, whatever it is, uh, think of Israel theater one of two ways, either biblical history, you know, and, and so they're kind of, they're still there. When we talk about Israel, it's, it's Israel that was. And so going to a modern Israel would be very instructive to them. And then there are people who are concerned about all the things that they might hear. And we need to put those things aside and, and look at all the, all the positive image. So that's, we're, we're looking forward to that. That's so beautiful. And we need to wrap it up. So we right. hope that, you know, we get a gist of, we could Can offer. Can we say when it's gonna, when you're thinking it's gonna be open? Well, because we want to be the first people here right now. <laughs> you're the and first people here yeah, already. No, I think when it's officially, officially open, but we're at exhibits. Uh, we're going to have to phase in some of what we do. We'll be doing some temporary exhibits. We'll be doing some, some programming, and we will keep you informed. Thank and we will keep you informed <laughs> and posted, and you really need to come here. Yes, we have Robin here. Yes. <laughs> So in the meantime, every second Sunday at 2 p.m., we're gonna have a program second Sunday at the Jewish Museum. And we also have a wonderful website so you can get a preview of what's to come at augustajewishmuseum.org slash virtual dash museum. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you so for much. Visiting us. Really, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, we will keep